Hello and welcome back to Detune Performance. And right here we have my Civic. And unfortunately, she's hurt. And I want to talk about B20s and their reliability that everybody is so afraid of. And I'm going to tell you my experiences and what I've done. And then we'll get to why she's hurt. We're going to start in. This is a JDM B20. track time I've gotten out of this motor has been in the car for a total a whole year and has been tuned by me everything's done by me so that's what I was talking the driver man I abuse this thing there is not a place there is nowhere that I go a me track anywhere she is getting rev limiter bounce of rev limiter power shifted into the next gear and we banged on now this car currently is on 14 pounds of boost yes that is a lot for the b20s uh, and she is also on 23 degrees of advanced timing now that might seem a lot but believe it or not this little motor here has been on 19 degrees previous to the 14 pounds so basically what I do is the more boost I add that I take timing out just to kind of help and is also still on 93 so the reason why I believe that she is hurt in the location that I know that she's hurt is because one time I was coming back home from work and I, you know, got a little bit into her and mid pull a big cloud of smoke fill my uh, passenger compartment. So I had a feeling that something had gone bad. Now that night was really cold. We're talking about in the 40s. So it made me believe that maybe we just made a little bit more boost than we were supposed to but it is on a boost bike uh, boost controller so we know that she is not gonna make more than the desired boost plus I also have a boost cut we did not hit boost cut. boost cut is set at 16 pounds which I have never had a problem with a boost cut it always sees boost cuts ignition so she just made a big old smoke cloud then I got home and I saw that there was smoke coming out the PVC pipe. And I'm like, you know what? It's probably just the PVC. The ball got stuck. This happens a lot in the harness. Very, very common thing. But then what confirmed my theory was this. Now, there's only one way to confirm my suspicion, which is that I cracked the ring land due to the rings not being gapped correctly for a boost. It's a complete bone stock motor revving to AK. Now, when I mean AK, I did Super Tech dual valve springs in the head that has allowed me to rev to eight grand for five months, no problems. And when I mean that this motor gets abuse, it gets abuse. Power shifting. Crazy track times and just overall abuse and she gets the worst of the worst there is no excuse for this little motor and i'm actually very very surprised that our rod has not come through the side of the block but anyways there's only one way to confirm my suspicion of correct ring lands and that is due to a compression test so we're going to do a compression test and we're just going to verify that she has a cracked ring lamp because that cylinder will be lower on compression than the rest so let's get started I do have a coil on plug kick so just makes it so easy oh man like what more can you ask for you know just remove the coils I don't want to start a fire or shock myself Right here, we have the heartbreaker. This is the biggest heartbreaker that you can ever get. But it is also your best friend. So it's a love-hate relationship. So 
I think we found our corporate. And I'll tell you why it's always number one in the in the Honda. Whoops. I forgot to hit record, but same. 90. Not even, 85. So yeah, we're not looking too good. Yep, that's the highest, 90. So I definitely confirmed what I had in mind, which is that one cylinder was gonna be zero or very low, which is cylinder number one. And the reason for that is because once all the boost gets built up and shoved into the cylinder, all the boost is gonna rush to the back of the intake manifold, rush into cylinder number one. Cylinder number one will always receive more boost than the other ones. That is a known fact. That's why those cylinders always go first. Now, I was not expecting to be that low in all three cylinders. Um, the highest, it was about 90. And about six months ago, when the last compression test was done, all cylinders were 185. It's roughly about the same as when I got it from the JDN Depot. So, stay tuned for episode two. I'm gonna take the head and inspect the damage, see if there is cylinder wall actual damage, um, or if it's just ring damage. So the goal is that if the walls are good and I can put some new pistons in there, I'm gonna order some Nippon Racing Pistons with uh, some H-beam rods, don't know what brand yet, and slap it on there and continue further, continue the research. At this point, what do I have to lose? Motor, it's already done. So we're just gonna continue and further research for the Honda game. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe down below, and tell me any comments, any suggestions. I'm open to anything and everything. Everything helps. But I will see you on the next video of the Honda game.